In addition to their scenic beauty, both Lake Bogoria and Lake Baringo contain some of the most fascinating biotopes in the Great Rift Valley. This 9,000 kilometer long fissure in the Earth's surface extends from the Lebanon to Mozambique and then across Kenya in East Africa. The Great Rift Valley originated around 200 million years ago and there is still volcanic activity in the region. Twenty kilometers north of Maragat is Lake Baringo, a unique biotope. In addition to Lake Naivasha, it is one of the few freshwater lakes in the Rift Valley. Each of the other lakes in this region is alkaline. Several jetties indicate that this nature reserve has become increasingly popular with tourists. However, they must learn to put up with the swarms of mosquitoes and gnats that inhabit this lakeland area. Insects represent the lowest members of the food chain for many of the animals that live here. Lake Bogoria and its surroundings also provide ideal living conditions for many African birds. The dense vegetation on the shoreline not only provides food for various animals, but it is also a relatively secure nesting area and good place to hide from predators. The crystal-like surface of the lake fascinates in so many ways. Due to its abundance of fresh water, Lake Baringo is an important habitat for numerous plants and wildlife. The purity of the lake plays a vital role in creating the wonderful vegetation that is to be found in this region. And the idyllic landscape around Lake Baringo boasts an impressive variety of vegetation. On the shores of the lake, small hotel complexes blend into a landscape that has been inhabited by man for thousands of years. Fortunately, the mass tourism that is evident in many of Kenya's nature parks has not yet found its way into the Lake Bogoria National Reserve. The accommodation here varies from camping sites to extremely well-appointed cottages. The Lake Baringo Club is extremely popular and it has a beautiful park. The splendid, well-laid-out park is not only popular with humans, but also a member of Africa's animal kingdom that is very rare in this region. In fact, this dromedary appears to be extremely well at home here. Compared to other parts of Kenya, this area has retained its restful atmosphere. 
a fact that pleases the many ornithologists who come here to watch the great variety of birds that live in the trees and bushes around the lake. More than 450 different species make Lake Boringo one of the most popular bird spotting areas in Kenya. A real paradise for ornithologists. The lake's large number and variety of birds is almost unique in Africa. Almost every tree and every branch is occupied by some kind of bird. It is not only indigenous birds that inhabit this landscape. Many migrating birds from Europe and Asia spend the winter months here. They complete the huge variety of bird life that is typical of the lakes of the Great Rift Valley. The nature reserve is one of the last secure refuges for many rare species. The guests of the Lake Boringo Club can experience the magic of Africa firsthand, due to the magnificent plants and flowers that grow here. The information that is contained on the official notice boards is to be taken seriously. It warns of the various dangers that exist here, including the crocodiles. The sight of the wide open jaws of these huge reptiles is both fascinating and frightening. Their apparent indolence can be deceptive, as when they attack, they can strike at great speed. It's advisable to observe these primeval lizards from a safe distance and with an experienced guide. The crocodiles should be treated with the greatest respect. But sometimes these reptiles can be so difficult to see that it's possible to approach them without realizing it. Close to the shoreline, crocodiles of all ages inhabit the waters of Lake Beringo. Some of the largest specimens can measure up to six meters. As with all reptiles, the crocodile is a cold-blooded animal. It adapts to the temperature of its environment and requires a warm climate. Its wide open mouth is not a threatening gesture. It opens its jaws in order to release the heat from its body. After enjoying the landscape, we now venture onto the water. Excursion boats lie at anchor by the jetty and the journey on Lake Beringo can begin. The idyllic landscape on the banks of Lake Beringo is dominated by several magnificent acacia trees. They give this area an extraordinarily gentle and relaxing ambience that is quite unusual for this region. The lake derives its brownish color from the volcanic mud of its surroundings which flows into the lake particularly following heavy rainfall. Nevertheless, the quality of the lake's water is very good.
The birds that live here are unfazed by the muddy color of the water. In fact, the opposite is true. As Lake Boringo is full of fish, it attracts a large variety of wildlife. There's no need for anyone to go hungry here. This lake that is situated on the western side of the Lake Ipia Plateau has the most enchanting scenery. The surrounding hills and mountain ranges form the perfect backdrop to the lake. As things go, Lake Baringo was discovered only relatively recently. In 1893, the famous Scottish geologist John Walter Gregory came across the lake while researching the Rift Valley. It is believed that it was John Walter Gregory who gave the Great Rift Valley its name. This huge cleft in the mantle of the African continent was also responsible for the creation of the lake. At an average depth of only 8 meters, the 170 square kilometer lake is extremely flat. The three small islands of Okokwa, Teddy Bear and Gibraltar provide important breeding areas for many birds that are threatened by extinction. white-tailed eagle and African sea eagle are also inhabitants of Lake Boringo. They're hardly seen elsewhere. These birds of prey are also known as the voice of Africa. The increasing destruction of numerous important natural living spaces makes the nature reserves around the lakes of the Great Rift Valley even more important. Without such nature reserves, many more creatures would be extinct. Unlike Kenya's more popular parks, the full beauty of Africa's animal kingdom sometimes requires a second, more focused look. It's not only wildlife that inhabits the lake. Man first settled in this region many thousands of years ago. The banks of Lake Beringo are inhabited by the Injemps tribe. As were their ancestors, the Injemps of today also survive by fishing. The arid soil of the desert-like surroundings makes for poor agricultural land. Even so, around 9,000 members of the Njemps tribe live around the lake. Local fishermen proudly show off their catch. A tiny canoe is the traditional mode of transport for the Njemps. It's far more robust than it looks, and it's sometimes used to transport goats and sheep. The hotel guests use an alternative form of transport. The excursion boats are motorized, and thus provide both speed and comfort. From high up in the trees, the numerous varieties of eagle that keep an eye on all that's going on are prized as the most beautiful 
and most majestic birds of the Great Rift Valley. Their highly developed hunting abilities are well known. With its fantastic vision, the African sea eagle is able to spot a fish swimming on the surface from a distance of several hundreds of meters. It doesn't miss a trick. Due to its abundance of fish, Lake Baringo has become an important refuge for these magnificent birds of prey. We leave these monarchs of the sky to move to another region of the Brown Lake that contains some fascinating geology. As there are no roads along the shores of the lake, it's necessary to travel by boat. In this way, it's possible to reach each section of the lake and its various tiny islands. The eastern section of the lake is quite different to the landscape on the opposite side. Here the vegetation is not as dense. Despite its impressive plant and animal life, the lake has still not been officially designated as a national park. Hot, sulfurous springs bubble out of the earth in the eastern area of the lake. They're volcanic. However, the quality of the water is not affected by this, as there are only a few of these sulfur-containing springs. The hot springs highlight the volcanic activity in this area of the Great Rift Valley. Geologists believe that this massive fissure will gradually lengthen and also become deeper. For many years, geologists pondered over Lake Baringo's outlet. They have now decided that it exits from the lake 50 kilometers north from within a semi-desert. On our return to the jetty of the Lake Baringo Club, we pass various simple, modest dwellings, as well as those of more substantial proportion. Today, numerous members of the Njemps tribe profit from the visitors who stay in the various hotels on Lake Baringo. A day full of magnificent natural impressions finally comes to an end. It's difficult to bid farewell to all the sights of this magnificent lake that has an almost magical atmosphere. From the park-like garden of the Lake Baringo Club, there's a glorious view across the lake that has maintained its natural splendor right up to the present day. It's a truly natural paradise. The legendary Lake Bogoria is situated almost a thousand meters above sea level. This lake set within the Great Rift Valley is also well known for its large numbers of flamingos.
The flamingos cover the surface of the water like a huge pink carpet. They fill the lake with life. It's impossible to count their numbers exactly, but it's estimated to be around 10,000 each year. They're a breathtaking sight. The famous geologist and scientist John Walter Gregory praised the spectacle of these flamingos as the most fascinating sight in Africa. However, despite such praise, Lake Bogoria is still more a place for an interested few rather than those who are keen to explore Kenya's more popular tourist destinations. Without doubt, the main attraction of this charming nature reserve is the flamingos. The lake seems to have magical appeal. But in fact, it is the water of Lake Begoria that attracts the wildlife. It contains a particular kind of algae that is one of the favorite foods of these colorful birds. The algae thrives in the alkaline water of the lake but it is not only algae that is eaten by these striking birds. Flamingos eat also insect larvae and crustacea. The crustacea are responsible for the flamingos' pink feathers. The young have white feathers. The flamingos obtain their pink color only when they've grown into adults and have become sexually mature. The adult changes its color only in exceptional cases, such as when it is stressed while caring for its young. But most of the flamingos on Lake Bogoria are well and truly pink. For most other creatures, the acrid water of this unique soda lake would prove to be fatal, but not for the flamingo. Up to 50,000 of them transform the otherwise arid, desert-like surroundings into a fascinating world of wildlife. Apart from Lake Nakuru in the south, Kenya's Lake Bogoria is the most important habitat for these proud and elegant birds. There are six subspecies of flamingo. Huge colonies that contain thousands of flamingo are quite common. They live in groups, they never live alone. Various species of these tall and striking water birds live on four continents. Although the sight of huge colonies of flamingo is still one of the most beautiful natural spectacles in Africa, it's been shown that in recent years, the number of flamingo on Lake Bogoria has decreased Biologists do not know what has brought about the decline in the flamingo population. 
Yet the picturesque surroundings and the lake itself have hardly changed since the foundation of the nature reserve. The Lake Bogoria National Reserve was founded in 1970. It not only includes the 30 square kilometer soda lake, but a total area of around 107 square kilometers. The extraordinary appearance of the flamingo is not only dominated by their striking feathers, but also by their long skinny legs. The legs of the largest adult bird can reach a length of up to 1.3 meters. The pink flamingo can grow to a height of 1.5 meters. It's mainly monogamous. How it can distinguish its partner from the other birds of the huge colony is something of an enigma. These elegant water birds are not only loyal partners, they also take great pride in their appearance. Each flamingo spends much of the day tending to its beautiful feathers. There is no other bird in the world that has such striking feathers and lives together in such huge colonies as the flamingo. Lake Bogoria is the ideal place in which to observe these magnificent birds. Here it's possible to observe the constant comings and goings of these fascinating animals for hours on end. While swimming or diving, some types of flamingos search for food with a hook-like beak. With the aid of this special beak, the flamingo is able to filter out minute organisms from the water. But most flamingo prefer to search for food in the shallow water, close to the shoreline. For some time, it was not known why these tall creatures stood for long periods on only one leg. However, it's since been discovered that they do this to retain heat. Because the feet and the beak contain no feathers, they lose heat quickly. The isolated feathers thus help to keep their legs warm. Due to their long legs, they have a unique and fascinating gait. Although the appearance of the various varieties of flamingo can vary, their way of life is typical for all birds of this genus. They all live in huge colonies in brackish water and flooded areas, as well as in alkaline lakes such as those to be found in the Great Rift Valley. As they congregate in such large numbers, it's sometimes difficult for the birds to find an open space on the ground. Crammed close to one another, the birds walk in typically strange fashion through the shallow waters of Lake Pogoria.
The lake remained undiscovered for many years. Only the local people knew of its existence. The alkaline water of the lake was first mentioned at the end of the 19th century in the written notes of James Harrington, the bishop of former Equatorial Africa. As is the case today, the surrounding savanna was then also inhabited by wild animals such as the kudu antelope, the impala and the zebra. But these creatures are clearly outnumbered by the shining pink colonies of flamingo. When they fly up into the sky, the flamingo are a spectacular sight. In spite of its size, the flamingo is a good flyer. While in the air, it keeps its long neck and legs stretched out. A flamingo in flight is a truly majestic sight. The flamingo requires a certain amount of space while preparing for flight. It's not just a case of a short takeoff. The landing area must be planned well in advance. Sometimes it's extremely difficult to find a suitable space in the crowded area below. It's not often that one gets the chance to see a single flamingo fly across Lake Bogoria. Both on the ground and on water, these birds prefer to remain in large groups. The formation flying of the flamingo is one of the most beautiful spectacles in the animal kingdom. This technique helps them to save energy. And such formations also help to scare off would-be predators. The formations don't have a special hierarchy. No single bird determines the height or direction for the entire group. As soon as the bird that is flying at the front of the formation becomes tired, it draws back into the formation. Another bird then takes its place. While the lead position constantly changes, the other birds continue to fly unhindered. The flamingo is a gregarious creature. The more animals that belong to a colony, and the happier these colorful birds seem to be. The areas close to the shoreline are important for breeding. The flamingo's conical nest is made of mud, and this section of the lake has just the right type. Both the male and the female flamingo are responsible for the hatching of the eggs. After a month, the young are hatched.
Although the survival of the birds on Lake Bogoria is not threatened, in other parts of the world, the habitat of the flamingo is becoming more and more restricted. Due to the wonderful sight provided by its flamingo, Lake Bogoria is indeed the richer for them. Thanks to these extraordinary creatures, the lake and its surroundings are now a protected area. In 1885, James Hannington, the first European to witness the unique spectacle of the Great Rift Valley, found it difficult to describe the outstanding beauty of the huge colonies of flamingo here. But Hannington was only able to enjoy the sight of these wonderful creatures for a short time. He died some months later while traveling with a Christian friend to Uganda. He died the death of a martyr. The various hot springs on the western side of Lake Bogoria indicate the geological origin and current volcanic activity of this region. The steam that hangs above the water creates a mysterious atmosphere and highlights the unique character of this place. The bubbling water indicates the huge amount of energy that is present just a few kilometers below the surface of the earth. The origin of the Great Cleft, the Great Rift Valley, came about due to tectonic movement of the earth. During the course of the preceding drift of the continents, both tectonic plates gradually moved apart. And around 20 million years ago, the ground between them began to sink. Closer one approaches the hot and bubbling mud holes of Lake Bogoria, the stronger is the smell of sulfur. Fish can't survive here, but the alkaline water of the lake is ideal for a special kind of algae. Clear evidence of the volcanic activity of this region are several geysers that also exist in the western area of the lake. In spite of its beautiful landscape, its special location at the foot of an impressive mountain range, the Sriracha Range, and each of the splendid natural wonders, Lake Bogoria is only visited by a relatively small number of tourists. The mountains of the Sriracha Range rise up into the sky more than 600 meters above sea level. A picturesque section of the Laikipia escarpments in the Great Rift Valley. Normally the flamingo avoid the hot water geysers in the western section of the lake due to the high temperatures and the sulfur content of the water, which can be harmful to them. The 
scorching hot springs and steaming geysers are extremely dangerous for the inhabitants of Lake Bogoria. Many of the flamingo perish in these hazardous conditions. Over the years, the high content of sulphur in the water has coloured the rocks orange. Flamingos still venture into this area. With the several metre high water fountains created by the geysers, the flamingo provide an even more spectacular sight as they appear to have no fear of the potentially lethal hot water from the geysers. In some places, the ground is scattered with the bones of dead birds. They are the remains of those birds that ventured too close to the hot water fountains and sulphur springs of Lake Bogoria. But tens of thousands of flamingo ensure that a sense of joie de vivre dominates this place. The impressive natural spectacle of huge colonies of birds has brought much fame to this lake situated in the heart of the Great Rift Valley. It's fascinating to observe the birds in their natural surroundings. When the lake has been transformed into a vast pink colored carpet, it's just impossible to look elsewhere. Due to the original mountain landscape and the unadulterated way of life of its diverse wildlife, Lake Bogoria is without any doubt a unique place in the Kenyan section of the Great Rift Valley. On Lake Beringo, the majestic white-tailed eagle was the monarch of the water. And here, it's the flamingo. It must now only be a matter of time until both lakes in the north of the Great Rift Valley attract more tourists who will seek out the fascinating delights of these remarkable natural reserves. Until then, both Lake Beringo and Lake Begoria will remain an untouched paradise for the wildlife that graces their shores.